Let us pray. Dear Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditations upon all of our hearts be holy and acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. A couple of weeks ago, right here in Arizona, I received a phone call from a bank. Uh, Mr. Honston, they said, this is a courtesy call. We are just verifying. Did you apply for a credit card at our institution? No, nope, I didn't. The woman on the other end of the line sounded a bit surprised. And then she said very quietly, you may want to contact the credit reporting agency. Now, after I contacted the credit reporting agency, I immediately went online and looked at my bank account. And there I noticed that there were two brand new bank accounts opened in my name. Accounts that I didn't want, that I didn't open, that I had nothing to do with. But there they were. Someone had actually stolen my identity. Now, if you've ever had your identity stolen, it's a bit disconcerting. Assumptions that you've made about yourself and your bank accounts, your investments, they're suddenly all called into question. Who did this and how did they do it? And, and did I inadvertently do something to leave myself vulnerable? And how in the world can I get out of this mess? There is a flood of emotions, anger and frustration, disappointment, and even fear. Well, yes, fear was one of the emotions I was experiencing. The world that as I knew it and expected it had suddenly was now off center. As I began to make multiple phone calls to get my life back, I was a little bit afraid of this brave new world. Now, it's a natural motion, a fear in the times of uncertainty and challenged assumptions. A few months ago, none of us would have expected that we would be gathering here as a congregation on Easter morning via the internet. Since that time, all of our original plans and the preparations have been laid aside because of this pandemic. The world as we knew it and expected it is now off center. Now, we are a strong people. We are stoic and reserved Presbyterians. We would never admit it, but I know that there are some out there who are experiencing fear this morning. Will I get this virus? Will my loved ones? What will this mean for my job? What about my employees? What, what about, what about uh, the, my retirement account? Well, the fear is very real for us at this time. We're navigating in a brand new world. Every step is uncharted. Now, think about those early disciples on that first Holy Week. One Sunday ago, they had entered Jerusalem with Jesus to the cheers of the crowds. There was a real sense that they were on the cusp of something incredible, something exciting. God's kingdom was breaking through. Then the world as they knew it and expected it suddenly became off center. Jesus is betrayed by one of his own disciples. Jesus is arrested. He's crucified, dead and buried. Those disciples were suddenly in a new world. Fear took control of them. We gave up everything to follow Jesus. What do we do now? What about the authorities? Are we going to be hunted down by the Romans? Are we going to face a cross just like Jesus did? All of Jesus' disciples became consumed by fear. Peter, the, the one who pledged to give his life for his master, he denies him three times. Others scattered, ran away when the world was turned upside down. Well, to be fair, there were a few that didn't. It was the women. The women remained. They stood by near the cross. They stayed despite how off-center the world had become. They probably were there when Jesus cried out and breathed his last. They were probably there when Joseph of Arimathea came and took the body and quickly buried it in a family tomb. In fact, three days later, after the Sabbath, these are the same women who came to anoint Jesus' body with the spices. I wonder if Perhaps that they were a bit disappointed with Joseph's quick work. Jesus, they felt, needed a proper burial, and they were going to give it to him. Now, that's how the world works. People die, and the people left behind grieve those who have fallen. The women who are traveling there to the tomb are talking about incredibly practical things. How are we going to move that stone that's in front of the tomb? What are we going to do when we get there? What are the 
the, the assumptions of this new normal that we've just entered into. Now, when they arrive, they encounter something they didn't expect. The stone is no longer in front of the tomb. And they enter into the tomb, and they experience something else they didn't expect. There's a young man there, appearing as an angel, standing there telling the women not to be afraid. He announces something that dispels another assumption of the women. Jesus is not here. He is risen from the grave. The angel then gives them instructions. Go tell the disciples. Tell Peter. Tell them that Jesus is alive. Tell them that Jesus will meet them in Galilee. Go. Don't keep this to yourself. Tell the world. And then the women do something that surprises us. The Bible tells us. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. They were afraid. They were afraid at this wonderful news of Jesus being risen from the dead. When we think about Easter, we, we think about celebration. I mean, this is the victory that we've all longed for. Jesus is no longer dead. He's alive. However, we must never forget that this first Easter was accompanied by fear. Terror and amazement had seized them. The women who kept it together at the cross now lose it at the empty tomb. The world that they knew and expected was again off center. People don't rise from the dead. When the powerful kill someone, they stay dead. Jesus' resurrection demonstrated to the world that the kingdom of God is here and now, and it isn't going away. No longer are we going to play by the world's rules. Instead, we're going to live by God's rules. The poor in spirit, God's kingdom is for you. Those who mourn, the meek, those who hunger and thirst, the merciful, the, the pure in heart, those who seek peace, the persecuted, God's kingdom is for you. When the pain and suffering of this world take away our identity, when our assumptions and expectations are turned upside down, we naturally experience fear. When our sins rob us of our relationship to God, it is a scary time. However, when through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ our relationship is restored, when God gives us a new identity to replace the one stolen by the world, it can also be kind of scary. Now this last month we've been reminded that the world is a pretty scary place. A, a microscopic organism can turn the world upside down. The challenge for us this Easter is not to know that. Everybody knows that. Everybody understands that this world can be a fearful place. What, what we're to do today, on this Easter morning, is we're to confront the risen Lord. And that can be just as scary. Now Jesus Christ is going to tell us to go to love and to share. He gives us a new identity, no longer sinners, but children of the King. And with that new identity, we represent Christ each and every day. It can be scary. The addict who embraces a, a life of sobriety, the bigot who now decides to love, the miser who chooses to share, the nurse who puts herself at risk by caring for the sick, None of these situations is easy, but this is the choice that the Gospel of Mark offers us right here at the empty tomb. Jesus Christ is not here. He is risen. Now what? Now thankfully, the women did not simply run away in fear. The scriptures tell us in Mark and elsewhere that the women and the rest of the disciples did accept this new identity that, that Jesus offered. He sent them into the world to proclaim good news to all creation. We are here this morning precisely because, that, because of that proclamation that they made. But that job is certainly not done. Have courage, my friends. The days may be dark, but God's light casts out the darkness. The road may be hard, but God's grace is sufficient for all of us. You may be weak, but God is strong. Death is the enemy, but the enemy has been defeated. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed.